Hey, Jim, before we go too much further uh, with the show, I sent you an email, one of the many emails I send you. I sent you one with various things happening in and around the world of wrestling. We did this a few weeks back, and you gave it like a name, and I said, well, I hate that, so I won't do this anymore. But <laughs> it's been several weeks, so I figured I'd bring it back and send you more links and articles and stories and videos of things yeah. you need to know about. Yeah, things I couldn't live without. You call it this week in McMahon land. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, you sent me, yes, some things. And, and there was a couple of things um, that I was interested in seeing, actually. And then a couple more things you foisted off on me. But one of the biggest ones, Samoa Joe returning. We had just talked about they just They just botched up uh, firing him. And Triple H didn't know about it. We just talked about that when he's, oh, we got to get him back. So they signed him back. Obviously, he's still not medically cleared to wrestle, but they realized that they could utilize a guy like that, not only as an announcer, but in a variety of roles because he's smart, knows what he's doing, and et cetera, et cetera. So they teased the idea that he would be replacing William. I always start to call him Steve Regal. But William Regal, uh, as general manager of NXT, and then they they finally had the in ring with Karrion Cross and Scarlett and Regal, where he's apparently going to step down, and he tries to, but then Joe comes back out. Blah blah blah. The point is, when I watch this, here's one of the differences to me between not to say that necessarily either one of them is positive. But in a WWE produced program, whether it's NXT, SmackDown, Raw, whatever, every one of these guys, Cross and girls, Scar Scarlett, Cross, Samoa Joe, William Regal, they look professional. They're they're they don't look like they just wandered in off the fucking street. They look like somebody. They have physical charisma. They're not doing funny stuff. They're not being silly and winking at everybody. It's unfortunately, in a lot of cases, with a lot of the talent, it's just an endless scripted promo recitation that could easily be done in half the time if anybody had some hitch in their get along, had a little fucking energy to it. Um, I love William Regal's promos and way of speaking and facials and his personality, the way he worked the whole nine yards, but this took a while. It just seemed across is still to the point where he's, I'm sure scared to go off the reservation and go out on his own and say things. So he's probably the most memorized of the bunch of them. And that you can tell he he's trying to put emotion in and he's trying to be an actor, but he's saying somebody else's material. But then at least when Joe came in, he's got enough of that simmering oomph and he talks. He's a, He's an articulate person, if you've ever just spoken to him. And he's got a lot a lot of experience, so he brought the level of this up because I like his promos. He does a good job, but I wished on the whole thing they could have just gotten to the point quicker. <clears throat> because there is, while Joe and Regal are doing their interplay, where I'm sure the writer's really spent a lot of time on crafting the angst that they were supposed to go through on whether, you know, Regal was going to step down and try to give it to Joe, but Joe says, absolutely not, William, but I will back you up. I want to make sure you get respect. All the while, Cross and Scarlet are just standing there with his dick in his hand. I guess he probably would have rather been standing there with his dick in her hand, but they're still standing there. And they're having to let, there's no... All of these confrontations in the ring, no real spontaneous argument goes that smoothly. And nobody knows how to get in and get out without throwing the other guy off or the guy without the guy being thrown off. To just interject shit, to just say things back and forth that people would say. The old Memphis TV argument, which was the highlight of Memphis TV usually, because all those guys knew how to fucking argue. <clears throat> it just... it. So that's the point I was going to make, is all of the WWE guys, it 
and the produced segments that they do, everybody looks professional. There's no funny, silly stuff. It's just lacking, except if you get the right talents, a certain amount of life to it. Whereas with the AEW programs, you can't take anything seriously. Everybody looks like a jack-off for the most part. The guys that do look like something are surrounded by, you know, outlaw, mud show, job guy looking talent, and everything's just a spoof. But there's always something going on, even if you can't follow it. So it's, I hate to say it, but it's more fun sometimes to watch AEW if you're watching it to make fun of it than it is to watch the WWE programs because everybody looks professional and they're serious, but it just doesn't ever go anywhere. And finally, this thing said, okay, Regal said, okay, I'll stay, <laughs> you know, as, as general manager, you can be, what did they term it? Uh, he, he's going to be the enforcer. And then Regal tells Joe that he can't be a competitor, he can't wrestle, or he can't lay his hands on anybody unless provoked. And then they took the last minute and a half, maybe two minutes, for Joe and Cross to stare at each other and Cross to slowly walk out with a mean look on his face. I've seen glaciers move along more briskly. Was it just me being cranky when I watched it, even wanting to like these guys? Or is it, is it just that all this stuff is so similar now with people coming out and just reading these soliloquies and doing these dramatic scenes and then walking off with mean looks? There definitely is something to the idea that everything in NXT feels like it's slower. Like Even though the wrestling in the ring, there's a lot of the high spots and everything, in terms of Things like this, it's just that WWE drawn out, it takes forever to do a two-minute segment. Yeah, the AEW matches never end, and the WWE-style promos never yeah, end. Yeah, the segments never end. We'll see. So, uh, what, 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 we'll see what happens with this. If he really can never wrestle again, commentator was the best role for him, not being an enforcer who's going to get physical. So maybe this means that they do think there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and maybe he'll be able to do a match again. Either that or maybe the Triple H just says, well, fuck, since he, since everybody was mad because these idiots that didn't tell me let, fired him, we'll bring him back and we'll put him in something to capitalize on the attention that he's gotten. And then we'll, if he can't wrestle later on, we'll work him back in as an announcer. Hire him uh, before they give him a YouTube show to be a commentator on. <laughs> They'll just create another YouTube show. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if, if they just kept hiring every ex WWE wrestler and, and made them the host of their own show on YouTube? <laughs> it's a funny idea. It's an interesting strategy. <laughs> oh, good Lord. But any, but yeah, but I'm glad he's back. Uh, anytime you can employ Samoa Joe, you've got something there. I just, I just remember the fucking, when you turned him loose as a beast to go out and say and be his own guy, you know, it, it, you got a lot more oomph out of him. You got used to, there used to be a lot more oomph in everybody. If that's the one thing I've noticed by watching so many of these shows from whatever company, and the, the promo, there's no urgency to these promos. There's no anger in the face to faces. There's no legitimate shit where you can tell a la Michaels and Bret Hart or Lawler and Dundee or any of the uh, Flair and Dusty, any of the guys who there was a little tension between, a little professional tension, the cutting remarks, there's there's nothing. It's just we're doing scenes from some play that some writer wrote somewhere. Anyway, um, did you also, see... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, did you see, and I haven't seen anything after the fact, but I saw right before the fact that last night, as we are recording, when they did SmackDown, Bronson Reed and Karrion Cross and Scarlet were there for tryouts. Well, not tryouts, but I guess we're there to have a dark match, which I guess is just so Vince could see them. What, they're on a goddamn television show every week. Why can't he see them there? He doesn't watch. <laughs> when, was the last time, when was the last time Vince watched NXT? Did Vince ever watch any of his own shows if he wasn't actually doing commentary on them? 
Yes. Every bit of he was there. He was in the truck. After he, the he, fact. Gorilla. He I mean, was, after the fact. If he missed something that he needed to go back and look at, I assume he did, but he was there on the premises when all the things were taking place. You don't actually think he watches NXT. I would have... <laughs> I would have thought instead of spending money for plane tickets to fly some fucking goofballs uh, halfway across the country to do a dark match at a TV taping when they're on fucking TV every week. So he could have just said, somebody give me a tape. I'm just saying that. But anyway, nevertheless, I don't know. It's not for me to say. 